Africa has a wealth of natural resources that have over the years driven the growth of African economies. The continent boasts a large and wide variety of mineral resources, with 12% of the world's oil reserves, 42% of its gold, and between 80 to 90% of chromium and platinum group metals. In addition, Africa has 60% of the world's arable land, which with the right level of investment, promotes a lot in terms of economic growth and social development from improved agricultural productivity, trade in agricultural commodities, and manufacturing and trade in processed goods. For Africa to benefit from its resources, the ability of Africans and African businesses to trade amongst themselves must be facilitated and anchored around strategies that promote investment and the free movement of goods, services, people and factors of production, all of which must be supported with the necessary legal frameworks and institutions that improve trading links and drive regional trade and economic integration. The Department of Trade and Industry drives the African Union's agenda of promoting regional integration and economic growth by creating the conducive conditions for African states, businesses and citizens to conduct business amongst themselves and with the world, and thereby position the continent as a significant and competitive industrial and trading partner in the global economy. The department delivers its mandate through its three divisions. Trade Division, Industry Division and Customs Cooperation. It also has two specialised units, the African Continental Free Trade Area Unit and the Mining Unit. The African Continental Free Trade Area is one of the key projects of Agenda 2063 and aims to use trade more effectively as an engine of growth and sustainable development in Africa by accelerating intra-African trade. By creating a single unified trading block in Africa, the AFCFTA aims to increase trade between African countries and boost Africa's trading position in the global marketplace by enacting strategies, policies and programmes that strengthen Africa's common voice and policy space in global trade negotiations. The AFCFTA came into effect on the 30th of May 2019. We are looking at 55 countries and each one of those has borders and when you are trying to move goods across those borders there are going to be customs inspections and the road network is not going to be fully developed and the cost of trading goes high. So under the African continent of retail area we are saying out of these 55 African countries, we create one market. And when we are creating one market, the long-term project is to create a borderless Africa in commercial terms, which means free movement of goods and services across the continent. And when you make that possibility, you are also encouraging the development of trade-related infrastructure across Africa. The AFCFTA is supported by five operational instruments. The Rules of Origin, which governs the conditions under which a product or service can be traded duty-free across the region. The Tariff Concessions, which provides guidelines on tariff liberalisation and information on tariff structures by countries. The Continental Online Tool for monitoring, reporting and elimination of non-tariff barriers, NTBs. The Pan-African Payment and Settlement System, which is a centralised payment and settlement infrastructure for intra-African trade and commerce payments. The African Trade Observatory, which is a trade information portal that will address hindrances to trade in Africa due to lack of information about opportunities, trade statistics, as well as information about exporters and importers in countries. So we are going to 
uh, develop a framework of collaboration involving the Secretariat of the African Continent of Created Area, the regional economic communities, and ourselves as the African Union Co Commission, especially the Department of Trade and Industry, with a key focus on trade facilitation, so that uh, we use the regional economic communities to ensure that uh, trade across Africa is not hindered by way of regionalization. It goes on smoothly from one end of the continent to the uh, next end of the continent. And we also like them to help us in facilitating the development of uh, 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 trade-related infrastructure. Because it has first to, draw, uh, to grow at the regional level before we can make uh, connections at the continental level. So the Secretariat has a cardinal role. And of course, it's a think tank. It means that it has to think ahead, making proposals to member states so that the market progressively grows. The African Union's African mining vision has the goal of ensuring that Africa's natural resources are harnessed in an efficient and effective manner to ensure that first and foremost, African citizens and African countries benefit from Africa's natural endowment by implementing policies, laws and other regulatory frameworks to guide the extraction and use of these natural endowments for economic growth and development. The Department of Trade and Industry works with key stakeholders to ensure that African countries support the realisation of the African mining vision through clearly articulated and structured frameworks that ensure the mining sector is transparent, equitable and there is optimal exploitation of mineral resources that will drive broad-based sustainable growth and socio-economic development. The department also works to implement the Agenda 2063 flagship project for an African Commodities Strategy, which champions a commodity-led industrialization by developing Africa's commodities as drivers for achieving the structural, social and economic transformation of the continent. It's well known that when we export our commodity as a, as a raw material, we export at the same time the job opportunity of our people. The African real leaders have realized this fact early and guided the commission should do and create and formulate a commodity strategy for, for the continent. The strategy aims to identify, formulate and drive the implementation of policies and programmes that will enable African countries to add value, extract higher rents from their commodities, integrate into global value chains and promote vertical and horizontal diversification anchored in value addition and local content development. The responsibility has been taken by DTI to do this job in collaboration with the stakeholders. We have taken this responsibility and started work and we created, formulated the commodity strategy, which is composite of three main, we have class classified our commodity into three sectors. Number one is agriculture commodity, number two, mining and energy commodities. Find out more about Agenda 2063 and the work of the African Union in promoting regional integration and economic growth through trade by visiting www.au.int.